This is Keith's solution to Walter Lewin's problem 194 and to solve it we need to know Coulomb's law which we learn about in Walter Lewin's uh, lecture 1 of 802 and also the electric field which we learn about in lecture 2 of 802. And from that we can produce this formula here which tells us that the an element, an elemental part of the electric field at some point a distance r from an element uh, q, a delta q, um, has, has this form here. So what we will do is we will sum the, the various delta q's that we, we deal with in the problem to get a total uh, electric field at some point x. So we're told we have two charged rings. They're actually like this, perpendicular to the paper. I've just drawn them like that for, so you can see what's going on. They're a distance uh, L apart, uh, that's the origin, and I'm choosing some point X where on, on the x-axis where we want to determine what the electric field is. Okay, so what we have, we consider a cone. So this would be our ring charged up at this end with a load of negative charge minus Q and the x-axis is down the middle and it looks something like that. So if we looked end on along the x-axis, hopefully you can see that, we can see that field is coming out in, in every direction. Uh, what that means is that the tangential field, the field in the y direction, will be zero because in, in, in one direction it's cancelled by something in the other and that happens all the way around. So along the x-axis and only along the x-axis we know that the field, the total E field at any point, must be in that direction as well. There is no tangential uh, component in the y and y can be anywhere, it, it simply doesn't matter. Um, because of that effect there. Okay, so we've already started to, to narrow down the direction in which the uh, the field is. It's going to either be that way or that way. Okay, from our so we've got uh, perpendicular e is going to uh, e is going to be zero. Uh, from uh, this equation here we can then see by considering this triangle, a right angle triangle, and considering a charge delta Q uh, on the ring, which will mean that the length delta L is going to be R delta phi. I'm just considering some phi as I go around the ring. I've got a charge delta Q over a length uh, uh, R delta phi at some distance r from a point x at some angle theta. Put all that together, we see that along the x-axis, the, the uh, delta e parallel, as I've called it, to the x is delta e cos phi, where cos phi equals this from that triangle. Similarly, we know what r, r squared is, uh, Pythagoras, and we also know delta Q, as I've explained, uh, is minus QR delta phi over 2 pi R, uh, which becomes that. Do note the minus sign because it's, it's negative charge. So for ring A, we basically substitute in um, for cos theta and little r squared. We know that delta uh, E parallel is going to be this here. Um, which then when we do the integral around the ring uh, this delta phi becomes 2 pi so it cancels with that 2 pi gives us this um, which when we substitute for cos theta we get that uh, which introduces another r down here uh, and then when we eliminate r cubed we get this term here that is for one ring I've called that ring A so that's for this ring here for ring B we get exactly the same thing except here, except where I put x minus L over 2, it simply becomes x plus L over 2. So the form of that and the form of that are very similar. Um, and then the total E at our point x is simply one plus the other. And again, it's in the uh, axis of, of the, the x uh, uh, direction. So all we need to do now is plug in some values. So 4x equals L, 
we get this fairly horrible looking expression here where all I've done is simply put uh, L in place of X all the way through which simplifies a bit to this um, we can see if we think about it that we can take out a factor of a quarter to the power 3 over 2 which is actually a 1 over 8 um, so the first answer simplifies to this uh, at x equals l note the minus sign which means that the field is in that direction no surprises since um, the charge on both rings is negative for x equals 2l we repeat the same process uh, and we get this expression here which again simplifies when we take out our factor of, of 1 over 8 from top and bottom uh, to that and again it's negative so it's in that direction for the x equals minus 1.5l same thing again but this time when we substitute in we get obviously the minus here for the minus q charges uh, and we get uh, a couple of minuses because we're now to the left of the x origin uh, so the minuses uh, cancel each other out and we get left with this expression which is working in that because it's a positive uh, e and that is my solution thank you